these people making these accusations. You got some dude named Lil Rod. First of all, that's oh, that producer. It should be a fucking pause on his name. Like, <laughs> n- nigga Lil named Rod. Lil Rod. Like, what? <laughs> what? That's pause. Do you think it's like a, a agenda to destroy popular This is what I'm black- saying. And if you know anything about, you know, the 60s, and I hate to get all like this, but if you know anything about the 60s and what they did with black leadership and all that, these were some of the tactics, right, to destroy you. Basically, they, they divide and conquer. Like J. Right? J. J. Edgar Hoover. There you go, yep. right? So, Cointel Pro, what they would do was they, they, they would put out misinformation, mm. have us looking at each other right they sending out letters and sending out things saying you know this one talking about that one this one got caught doing this right Mm -hmm. and it keeps us disorganized right and and also propaganda which is fed fueled through the media is a tool that's always been used media controls the mind this is what I'm saying so I'm not quick to jump at what everybody else is running running towards like because if you ask the a- average person he's like what what you think he did he's like i, I don't know he did something I, I don't i don't know like he you know what i mean he he, he was sex trafficking oh all right what's sex like I, they got to give me a clear definition of what sex trafficking is so you saying he was what he was making people sell their body like i don't i'm saying is it under eight like it, it's not clear to me Welcome to the Baller Show podcast, available everywhere you get your podcast. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share our YouTube page. One time for Revolt TV. I go by the name of Ferrari Simmons. OCT, what that? Mado in the building. Hey. New Mado. New Mado. New Mado. What's up, sir? I made it. Ball uh, first and foremost, we appreciate you pulling up. Nah, yeah, man, it's all good. This is um, you know, it's a family business over here. I've right? been a big fan of you for a very long time. I love how you always reinvent yourself. Thank and, you. And Thank stay you. and stay current. That's right. That's a very hard thing to do. Absolutely. Because we could we could age out fast. That's in the, oh, man. In this five five six years. They, that's what they really give us. Yeah. Can, can we can we take it back though? Can we go all yeah. the way? Yeah. Mm-hmm. First, I want to know where did the new main drop come that from? That came from. So what happened was. Um, you know me and Angela always been tight for years mm-hmm. you know she called me her BRF her best rapper friend yeah. <laughs> so what happened was um, I ran into her she said yo listen um, Ray J is doing this like this little get together for me um, for my new show come by I said bet I'm gonna pull up I get there it's lit everybody's having fun and um, we chilling so I had just it was around Valentine's Day and I had just dropped the song me and Fab Right, and my artist, uh, the Star Baby. So it, it was like a girl song. So I was like, you know, I, I wanted to play it. I wanted. To, there was a lot of girls there. So Angela and them was like, all right, put, let me let me get it. Let me put it on my phone. And you know, we was drinking, taking shots. So we was a little saucy. And um, and somebody just said, New Mano. So every time <laughs> we st- went to play it, they was going New Mano. Yeah, New Mano. So that night she was like, Yo, why don't you come up to the show and guest host for the week? I said, bet, I'm going to come, I'm going to pull up. So I pulled up, and I walked in. They was like, new main oh, so it just stuck. It mm-hmm. just stuck. It just stuck. Is this when, uh, when she was talking about guest hosting? this lip service, right? No, it was the Way Up show. Oh, the Way, way Up this show. Is the way, way up this is all mean. about the way. This is all over a year ago, so this is everything to do with the Way Up show. So new main oh, is that new? Is that new. Wow. Is that new? I and you that never And then you never for. left, because you've been the I the never co-host. left, but right, yeah. I, so what happened was I came for that week. <laughs> Thinking that like this is my girl though, yeah, like so it, girl, yeah. it, it, it wasn't left, like no pressure, right? Mm-hmm. I never done radio before other than being an artist and promoting what I had going right. on. Mm-hmm. So when I get up there, it's like, all right, it's cool. Yeah, they was like, you kind of good at it. Would you would you would you come back? I said, I, I pull up and ain't nothing. You my dog and ain't nothing. You know, Jasmine here, we vibing and I'm we having fun. It's, it's all good. Yeah. And I started to come back and I started to come back and then the new Mano and then the fans were saying like, we like when Mano. Is on it because I wasn't coming every day, but the fans were saying we like when he up there, and they had the segment where it was like it's supposed to be no judgment. I'm judging. I know. So and it was yeah, like yeah, it became a, a thing. A harsh so, yeah, critic yeah, with, yeah, the, with them yeah, people yeah. be calling in. Yeah, yeah, but we gonna we gonna what we yeah, like to okay, do here is right. rewind a little yeah, bit before thanks. we get all the way to 2024. Right. So let's take it all the way back, the way back. Uh, to Brooklyn. Oh man, is yeah. your name really Mano? My name is Jermaine. Got mm-hmm. it. So Mano is a nickname. 
Got it. Um, you know, they call me Main. You know, Main, Main, Maino. In, in, in the neighborhood that I come from, right? I'm from Best Star. So Best that's where that's, Biggie's from. That's Biggie from. All the greats come from there. Mm-hmm. My, you gotta understand. It's on the map. All the, We're all Brooklyn. All, the, all, the, all of the greats: Biggie, Jay Z, mm-hmm. Big Daddy Kane, Fabulous, Lil Kim. Like you name it. I'm from there. We all from different sections in Best Star, though. Um, so the neighborhood I'm from, whatever your name was, if your name was Steve, they call you Steve O. Right. If your name is Wayne, they call you Wayno. You know, so my nickname is Maine, they call me Maino. So, um, I mean, you know, ghetto boy. You know what I mean? Child of the ghetto. I got caught up in the in the in the street very early. Um, you know, my story is pretty well well known. I went to prison when I was around sixteen, seventeen, went, you know, um, did ten years in prison. I never rapped a day in my life. Never thought about music. I never I never had any aspirations or dreams to do music. Music was never something that I ever even fathomed. But when I was in prison and I was going through what I was going through, getting in trouble in there, you know, you know, one night I was just like, yo, I was in a box, 23 hours locked in. I'm like, yo, I'm going to write me a rhyme. You know, I liked how it felt. You know, and at the time I was like, man, you know, it was like Biggie was out and Wu-Tang was out. And, you know, this is, this is the 90s. So I was like, man. What if I go home and become a rapper? And I started to play with that thought, like, man, what if, what if, what if I did that? And now you gotta understand at this time nobody had ever done that before. Before me, it was never nobody that had ever done a large amount of jail time and come home and become an artist and become home and have any bit of, of, of platinum success or anything. I had nobody to look at and say, well, such and such did that, right? That had never happened before, so it was like a long shot. To even think that you can even come home after after doing eight, nine, ten years and become an artist, so it was a, uh, it was it was it was a thing. So it was a miracle actually. Mm, and it was out of boredom, like you mm-hmm. you just said, let me just start rhyming. Was uh, did you have like um, did you test it out in in jail? Like I mean, in prison, did you test it out with your peers in there? I guess or so so. Did they tell you it was hot? Like man, you <laughs> yeah. should do this. Like the thing is this, right? Um. It was, I was in the box a, a lot. Like okay. I was spending a lot of time in a, in the solitary box. confinement. Solitary confinement, mm-hmm. twenty three hour locked in. You know, spending spending years that way. And when I started rapping, it was under those conditions. I started rapping in the box. So, okay, y- you understand? So I'm in my cell. I don't got nothing else to do but maybe read, sleep. Can you listen to the ups. radio? Dude. They give you these headphones. You plug into the wall and you can hear the, you know, the rock and roll or the alternative music Damn. and stuff like that. So this is they didn't have a lot of hip hop stations back then. You only heard like hits or whatever was like the super popular record on the on the Hot 100 or or you know just like a hot hot hip hop song. You then that. you heard it right. So you heard Snoop and Dre. You heard Biggie because you know there was they was up there in the sky. Um, so I was, I was under those conditions. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know like nothing about the industry. I didn't know nothing about being a rapper. I just knew that it felt good doing it. Mm -hmm. Like I would just, it would help me pass the time away. Right. So I'm like, man, if I, if I get up this morning after I eat breakfast and I start writing me a rhyme, it'd pass a couple of hours. And next thing you know, it'd be dark and the days started to go faster like that. So that's kind of like how how I was, I was in that mode of like just doing something new that I had never done before. And it felt good doing it. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and so I would, I didn't have a lot of confidence in doing it though. So I would like, they would have like porters that, that helped give out the food and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And you know, one of the guys is a homie of mine. And I was like, yo, what, what you think this sound like? And I, he was like, it sound all right. It was like some stressed out, yo, I live, I'm sitting in the cell, I'm sleeping <laughs> like hell. It was like mm-hmm. some Tupac, some pain food. You're like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like that. So yeah, so I was gonna say, so when you came home, mm-hmm. what was the plan? Did you come home and say, I'm getting in the studio? So. From the time that I started rapping, I still had more time to do, right? And, you know, so all I had was a 5 to 15. I could have been home at 5, but like I said, I was getting into and a lot of trouble. if you don't mind trouble. me asking, would you? I had a drug-related kidnapping, Okay. right? So I had a, I had a charge that, you know, it, I could have got 25 to life for, right? Um, but I, I, I was young. I copped out to a 5 to 15, and I was, if I had been like a, a smooth young cat, I could have probably been home in five years, right? But I was in the shit, 
you know, getting caught up, right? So I did ten. You did the full ten. Did ten. So that, that's that's what they call you. That's what they call like your CR, like your conditional release. Like they have to let you go unless you just lose all your good time. So I had some good time left, which was the five years. Okay. And they let me go in ten. So what was important about that is that, like I was telling you, like I ain't really had no confidence. Yeah. I was looking at myself like I ain't no rapper. I ain't no rapper. Like, and like being in that solitary confinement, you didn't have anybody to bounce your ideas off. Not of. really. It ain't till I got out of the box, and then I started to kind of like pull certain dudes that I I was comfortable with, and I would let them know. See, I had a complex because I looked at I was like, man, I'm a gangster. I ain't a rapper. And mm-hmm. this at this point at this at this point in the culture, it wasn't that it wasn't that fashionable to be an artist to be a rapper. Meaning because we, the way we was looking at it, like man, you rap ass nigga, like rappers, <laughs> like yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you sitting on the yard rapping, being somebody entertainment. Like we, I, I had it was like kind of like a negative connotation. Okay. So I was struggling with that. Mm-hmm. I was struggling with the idea of me being a rapper and how people looked at me because what I thought of myself at that time was like I'm on my G I'm on I'm stemming I'm stepping in a certain kind of way and I don't want nobody to be playing with me or look at me and make and, and mix me up mm-hmm. right so I was like struggling with that so what happened was I never told nobody from the outside world that I was rapping mm. like all of the people that that looked out for me my friends my brothers the people that really was there for me the women that was coming up I never I, I held that secret for years because the reason why I held those that secret for years is because it was like I said it was so far fetched to believe that at this point somebody could come home after doing 7 8 9 10 years and become an artist that had never happened you had artists that did small bids, you know, two, three years and all that and, 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 and popped off. But we talking about a gang of time. That had, that was never... Nowadays, you see that. So I never told none of my people because if I were to call home and somebody would have said to me, yo, man, what you going to do when you come home? And I said, yo, I'm a rap. And they would have <laughs> said to me... They would have been like, man, get the fuck out. You ain't a rapper. Mm. I would have said, you right. Mm. I'm not a rapper. What am I doing? And it would, and I would have been out of that dream. I would have been out of that bag right then and there. I would have been guarding yourself from that. Yeah, I mean, we kind of glad that you did that because yeah, I, I, I heard I saw a Ti quote that he was like, sometimes you can't share you your can. vision. You can't. You can't. You can't. Sometimes you got to keep it to yourself. Your, their fears on you. Right and right. And because this was just so unheard of, it's not like now when you know you you this rapping and came out. You heard you did twelve That's, years. It's like, almost like. It enhances now. Yeah, now, right. You yeah. hear about that now. This is totally unheard of. This is this is what I'm saying. I can't even believe sometimes that that even happened to me mm-hmm. because I was. It was so many guys that was that was like rapping, and I was just you know I'm a fan of the culture. I could quote anything, right? And I was come stop by in the yard and listen to dudes, and I was like, yeah, he could be something when he go out. That never ha- that never worked for nobody else. Mm-hmm. Why would it work for me? When I wasn't even the one that was doing it like that. So the thing, so I never told nobody until I got to a place where I was super confident in it. Until I got to a place where I started saying like, yo, you know what? I'm going to go home and do it. And um, I had made a tape, right? Because back then, you know, my, my brothers, my people, they used to be around Biggie. They used to be around Kim. So I was like, man, I'm going to go home and be around Biggie. I'm going to go home and get with and get with them and I'm going to blow up, right? So we all, I had those dreams. So I, I made a tape. Snuck it out the jail, got it to my people, and um, sent them a long letter. And it was received well. Like, it was like, okay, all right. It wasn't, the, it, 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 they didn't give me the, 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 uh, the feedback, the negative feedback that I thought I was going to get. So, at that point, um, you know, my people was just like, yo, look, whatever you want to do, we're going to support it. Nice. Whatever you want to do, you know what I mean. That's My God was like, a great feeling to hear. that was a great feeling. So he was like, "Yo, you, you know, you, you want me to get you some books? You got time? You know, he sent me Donald Passman, you know, Ka- Ka- uh, 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 Kashif book. All you need to know about the music business." So I started to read, and then I was like, "Yo, we need to start our own company." And and I started. I I came up with the name Hustle Hall Entertainment while I still was in prison. So hustle hard. You say man, no hustle hard. That I I birthed that in prison. Where did that come from? That name. It just felt like that's who we should be. Like mm-hmm. like we hustlers. Like we gonna figure figure it out. Mm-hmm. We gonna. This is what we do all day every day. We trying to figure out ideas of how to come up and how to make it, how to get money. Right. We hustling. We hustling hard. We gonna go get it. 
the early main ovation. Yeah, yeah early main ovation, definitely. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you get out. Mm-hmm. What happens then? I get out. So 2003 will I get out right so what I get so so the thing was I got out originally 2001 but I caught a violation and um for I, I was home only for five months Damn. and I caught a violation and wound up doing a year so you had to go back so I had to go back but when I came out my people was like we had already understood you know my brother Daiko my brother mouse they had, we had already understood what we what what I was going to come home and do right and they was they was ready to receive that and help me to do whatever I needed to do. So, you know, I made it, I made my first tape, you know, made my first CD, it was Hustle All Entertainment, Present Main O, you know, and um, it, it was like I, I, my first step into me, I had never been in the studio before. This is my, everything was brand new. Everything, every feeling, every every experience was brand new. I went, I went to prison at an early age, so some of the things that I was behind socially you know, dating and going out and doing certain things. Like, I'm 27, 28, but I'm behind. But at the same time, I got this dream of being an artist. So, you know, I'm stepping. I get locked back up, do my, do my, do my, uh, my, my violation. And I was depressed. I, I was going to say, like, is this discouraging at this point? What? Yeah. They locked me up for going to see my co defendant, for going to visit him on the prison, like like going to visit him for being, quote unquote, a real guy, right? A real nigga. I'm going to see my guy. They locked me up, give me a year violation. And I said, man, this music thing never going to work for me. Mm. My girl pregnant at the time. Oh, man. I'm going to miss the birth of my seed. I didn't know I was having at the time. Mm -hmm. I got to do another year. This ain't never going to work for me. I'm never going to make it. How would you pull yourself out of that? Time. Because when I was feeling like that, you know, when you're going through something, right, it feel like it's going to last forever. I'm sitting there just just trying to fathom the idea that I got to do a whole nother year. And I'm saying everything that I thought I wanted to be, every all of the thoughts, I, I want to get out the street, man. I want to do something different. I've been here all my life. I don't know nothing else. Streets and jail. Jail, back to the street, back to jail. And I was depressed for a long time. I wasn't up there trying to write no rhymes. I was, I was just depressed. And one day... I started to feel like this is going to, I'm going to go home. So time will start to heal certain things for you. So I was just like, man, six months then went by. I got six months left. I maybe still could pull this off. Am I going to sit here and wallow in my shame? Am I going to sit here and still just be caught up in my feelings? Or I'm going to stand up, pull my pants up and, and figure it out. So my son was born while I still was there. That made me happy, but then it also made me feel like, damn, what I'm gonna go do? Yeah. You gonna go full street? You gonna go full steam ahead in the street, or you gonna still try to salvage this dream? Man, I came home three months after my son was born, but by that time I had already dug into my reserves and started to feel better about myself and started to say, look, you know what? I'm coming. I'm gonna do it. I got back to it. As soon as I got home, I got back to it. I met K. Slay. I met DJ R. Enough. R. P. K. Yes, R.I.P. R.I.P. to K. Slay. You know, DJ Clue, um, you know, Envy. These were dudes very early on who was like very integral because this was the mixtape era. Yeah. You know, and I got right into that, into that, that circuit right there. So it started to happen. And then you got a deal with Motown and... Um, mm-hmm. What was that like when you got your first deal? I know it didn't work out, but what was that first deal like? That was tremendous for me. Mm-hmm. So I, so Kim was somebody that I had known from, you know, from the neighborhood from early on. Lil Kim. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I had got around her, and um, that just opened up my mind to to the possibilities that this really could happen. So I'm, you know, this is a superstar, right? So I'm coming around and, you know, I'm meeting people and I'm meeting Swiss and I'm meeting this one, right? And I'm moving around, you know, and I'm in the studio. I'm, I'm hands-on. 
right? And at the same time, I'm doing my own thing too. I'm on the mixtapes. I'm on Clue. I'm on K Slay. I'm freestyling on, on, on the radio down there. So it's like I'm doing my thing. And then I made a song. I made one song that changed my life. I made a song called Rumors, mm -hmm. right? The song, the song Rumors changed my life. See, people, that they talk about how I hate it and all that, but this, nah. This is the song that changed my life. This is the song that got me my first major record deal after coming home from prison 18 months. Mm -hmm. So from the time that I was in, in prison sitting up there stressed to the time I got my first re uh, major record deal was less than two years. What? You gonna tell me, man, you could do anything. What? Yeah. Now, I wasn't yeah. no rapper. What? So that was that was that was a that was crazy. That would that just the feeling of somebody saying to me, yo, we wanna we wanna sign you to a rec a, a record company. Um and it was tone from Trackmasters at the time. He That's was tone. running, he was running Motown, right? At, at Universal. He was it was Sylvia Rome. Mm -hmm. He was underneath Sylvia Rome. So Signing that deal was just like everything for me. Like I was just so stuck in the moment that that I I, I didn't even realize they that I needed to be doing more, and that they needed to be doing more. And, they, and two years then went by and I got dropped. Like you know what I'm saying? But I was just so stuck in the fact that I was just like, oh, I got a deal less than two years. Yeah. You know? Like you said, you were just so in awe, and then you had got dropped. You know? How did you take that lesson into your next situation with Atlantic? So I was down here. Oh, I was in Atlanta. in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta. It was a. Um, it was one. Of, it was the BT Awards. This was. This is. This had to be maybe two thousand and seven. Two thousand six, two thousand seven, right? And um, man, I was down here. We was. We was. You know, running around at the awards, and and I got a call from the lawyer. He said, uh. Hey, the record company don't feel like they don't want to do business with you no more. Ooh. At the award, why are you at the award show? I wasn't at the award show, but I was in Atlanta. Okay, and I was like, all right, all right. You know, two years had went by. They wasn't really doing what I what I thought that they were supposed to do because I had the notion that as soon as you sign a recording deal, like they're gonna blow you up. Like they do all the work, right? Like this is what I'm thinking. Like, okay, like. I'm going to be on TV. I'm going to have songs with Mariah Carey. Like, I'm going to be up, right? Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to have this feeling of success. I'm going to be living in a big house. My mom's going to be good. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Like, as soon as you get the record deal, everything happens. And it wasn't true. You get the record deal, you're supposed to work even harder. Mm -hmm. right. So, when he called me and told me that they didn't want to do business with me no more, for some reason, I wasn't stressing it. For some reason, I just, I don't know why. I didn't have no move in my head. I didn't know what I was going to do. But I was like, all right, cool. And then I called Tone. I was like, yo, you know y'all dropping me, right? And he said, what? Man, I'm going to fix it, man. Don't worry about it. You good. I said, nah, man. I'm cool. Let it, let it be. I don't know why. I don't know why. I can't tell you what the feeling was, but I was, I was confident enough to know that I'm going to be all right. But I'm back in the hood, you understand? I'm back going to the to the to the to the hood studios because you know I had a budget. I was up at Sony. I was, you know what I mean. I was getting, you know, I was having a, you know, uh, interns and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I was I had a food budget. So it, things different. Now we back, you know, in the basement, and um, you know, I I just felt like I was that? right. Do you think you needed that? Yeah, part right yeah, there? yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you gotta get, you gotta, you gotta come back down, right? You gotta sometimes get be humbled you understand sometimes you got to be knocked down you know what i mean but it's it's a test to your to your strength you know and i felt like in that moment i was i didn't know what i was going to do but i knew i was going to be all right is that when high hater came inserts absolutely close by in the, close in by range? so what happened was this i had been talking to atlantic i mean i guess we was talking um Gene Nelson had just started his aunt and on over there. You know, we was really close at this point. Um, it had been some talks about me actually coming to Atlantic at a time. They knew my relationship with Kim at the time. So it was like it was, you know, we was talking 
And then I didn't have no deal and none of that. And then I made this song, Hi Hater. Right when I didn't have nothing. So I don't have no deal. I mixed the song. And I know and I when I hear the song, I'm like, yo, this is this is this could be this could be it. Right? That's universal. It was universal. And I the felt hook like, was crazy. Right. I felt like it was something universal. I felt like it was um I had stole a hook from I stole a hook idea from from Cameron actually. Okay. Cameron had a song. Cameron had a song on his album, Come Home With Me. And the line went, he was talking about somebody and he said he come to his funeral and he look in a casket and go, hi, hater. Mm. So the, I was like, ooh, you know what I mean? And I had heard that when I was in prison. That album came out. I still, you know, we had Oh Boy and all that on there. I had heard that when I was in jail. Mm -hmm. So I was like, just him saying hi, hater to somebody that was hating on him. But now the person is dead. He in the casket. I just, I totally got that. And... I kind of took that idea and 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 made that hook, you know. Um, so when I heard it, I knew it was something. I knew that everybody in the world felt like they had haters, whether they was young, old, black, white. You know, it didn't matter, Amen. right? That's gonna, you know, it's gonna go because it was very relatable. But I still didn't have a deal. So at the time, my brother eighty, he's uh he's in the office talking to fifty. And um, 50 asking him what we doing. Like, yo, what y'all doing? He's like, yo, man, we've been talking to Atlantic. Um, and he says to him, you know, word, y'all been talking about what they doing? He's like, man, you know, you know how it is. You talking to labels and sometimes it, it goes months. Mm -hmm. Say, yo, man, what you, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? You could be yeah. talking for months. You could be talking for months. Yeah. Facts. You know, but you want to hear the words. These are the words you want to hear when they want to do business with you. Who's your lawyer? That's, mm -hmm. who you, that's what you want to hear. Yeah. Right? The back and forth talking is cool. He says to him, yo, what what they what they trying to do? He's like, man, we we've been talking. He said, yo, you need me to you need me to call over there? He said, yeah, why not? And um he picked up the phone, called over there, called Craig Cowman. Yo, look, what y'all doing, Mano? He said, Oh yeah, we've been talking. He said, Look, man, if I could do it, I would do it. Shout out to 50. Yeah, yeah. This is this is this is the thing, right? Like, that call put me in position right i never forget that call um i wasn't there for the call but i got the call mm. right God. the thing was yeah. you, you know this is 50 this is at the time when like he's hot yeah, it's 50 right yeah. there's nothing there's nothing bigger than him he called that man and said listen he called that white man and say look <laughs> still calling white men out today yeah call that white man and say look what y'all what y'all doing with mano yeah, y'all gonna do this deal or what? What's happening? I would do it if I could. They got their movement. They, you know what I mean. I would do it, and that's all that needed to be said. You know what happened? They called me right away. I had a meeting the same day, like this, like it was like a late meeting too. Like Fine. you understand, it was like after office hours. Like mm -hmm. they they called me up there, and I and I go up there, but I got that song. I got other songs, but I had that song. And when they heard that song, they said, oh, this is a smash. Now, this is probably like a year, year and a half before it even came out. Mm -hmm. But that's how I, I, I was able to position myself from getting dropped to finding myself to finding, you know, some foot and in, in having, you know, some, you know, some help, you know, because that that call was was very very, very. It's a lot of calculated phone calls, a lot Absolutely. of calculated steps, a lot yeah. of confidence in yourself, yeah. believing yeah. in yourself to position yourself mm. and have leverage. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But real quick, just for the audience, because I think a lot of times people confuse um, how a record works, like a hit record. Like you said, you had High Hater in the clip like yeah. way before it came out. Right. And, you know, even today, you'll hear a record like a long, like, early on and then it comes out like a year or two later right. can you explain that process because i think a lot of people get confused with that it's it's about positioning i knew when i had that record i was like i was hearing different things right i remember a dj in new york was like man it's cool it's like a mix show record i remember kim telling <laughs> me i remember kim telling me yo you need to you need to throw that out there but i knew if i threw it out there i know i had i had i had you see i'm a i'm a person i like to learn right I remember Buster told me he said a record with no 
no plan, and no resources, it's not a record at all. Oh, that's good. Right? You can, sonically, it's going to sound like. <laughs> Come in or go stay out. Come on, he's telling the story. <laughs> sonically, it's going to sound like you're like oh, going to be in your car like, oh, this is the greatest record up ever. How you doing? I'm doing, girl? how you doing? How you feeling? I'm blessed. You know? And the thing is, without without the plan, without the resources, without all these things, it, it's just it's just a dope record for you for you for you and your people to enjoy. So I knew that. So I I kept it because I knew I didn't want to just throw it out there and just it just be lost. Mm. You know. So I I know I needed some muscle. Baller alert! Hey yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy Mano, and right now you tune into the Ball Alert Show. Real quickly, uh, you mentioned Kim a lot and, you know, the most pivotal times as far as getting your career started. Mm. What was the role that she played in your life at that time? Because it seems very important. Um, I feel like I was I was kind of like in her camp. Right. Mm. Um, you know, we had our own thing. We was hustle hard. You know, we had I had, you know, the streets, so to speak. Right. I had I was I was very. Um, important in my neighborhood and very uh, influential where, where I come from, me and my guys. So we had that, you know. But Kim is this is this is a superstar, right? And you know us us coming around her, you know, it was it was uh it helped it helped me to to for one it opened up my mind, right? First time I ever been on a Learjet, be flying out to Miami. That's how I was able to make rumors because. There was rumors that I was hearing while I was in Miami. Mm-hmm. And I came back, like I just came back from Miami, right? So the thing, it, it was like she didn't have to she didn't have to do nothing for me. That was enough. Right? Just she, being a, a part of the experience the and experience learning the was game. Enough. So it's like this this is what I'm saying. Like a lot of times artists want you to do things for them all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't need that. So quick I, quick quick scenario. We was down there working on her album. Um, Naked Truth. Mm-hmm. Two days go by. I'm noticing that she not in the studio early on, and only the engineers in there. So the engineers sitting there bored. She in the crib. All of the other guys that's helping the writing and all that. They all in the crib with her. So I'm like, yo, I go to Gene Nelson. I'm like, yo, look, nobody in the studio working. Can I go in at like <clears throat> 10, 11 o'clock in the morning? He like, sure. So this is what I'm saying. This is me taking initiative. Yes. This is me saying, look, I want it. Mm-hmm. I want it bad bad enough. I'm 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 good with, with you being around, but I'm re- I'm willing to work for myself. And that was always my attitude. Question. How is Mano at this time when you got the song, the high hater mm-hmm. song in the clip, you get the deal. Right. And it's not coming out yet. Right. How does Mano stay out of trouble? Because Mm-hmm. Remember, right, you, you, right, 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 right. You right. big dog. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying you did time, right. and I know people may look to you to be that guy from mm-hmm. the past, right? And they're not looking at the rapper part that you're right. trying to Indeed. achieve. Yeah, that was always something at that, the highest level. Yeah. How do you? How did you stay out of the way, or stay out of trouble, or stay low mm-hmm. with moving around correctly? Um, just got to do it because I know that's difficult. It is difficult. It was always, always, you know the. The idea of of trying to um, teeter totter on the streets, you know, and and certain issues that you still may have in the street, you know, and I it, it was there was things that I still was dealing with in the street, you know, that I kind of wanted to tend to, right? It's kind of things that I wanted to finish, mm. but what I'm gonna do? I got an opportunity of a lifetime, right? Like this is what we, this is what we. We dreamed about this is everything that I was talking about while I was in prison. I'm saying when I got out, I'm telling my guys we could do this. We really who we say we are. Everybody else faking. We really that. So we could really go do this. And the thing is, I would like to say it's having a strong, strong support system of people around you. And no, yes, man. The guys who I call my brothers love me so much that. Man, I don't want to see. Nah, we doing this. Fuck that. Them issues and whatever you want to tend to. You know what I mean? Cause I'm, 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 I'm not. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm like a guy that kind of like don't take the high road a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Like with things. Like if it's like something that would lingering, I'll be like the first to like address it. Like I don't like. 
you know, be like, oh, I ain't gonna say nothing. Like, nah, I want to talk. Like, we gonna get right to it. So, you know, it's things that happened in the, in the hood, and you know, stuff that was going on, and you know, on on at the same time that I was trying to get in the industry, you know, I had to just kind of like fall back from that because I had an opportunity that, you know, it would been counterproductive. You know, to kind of like, like we did all this work, and you just gonna go fall victim to that? You dumb. Mm -hmm. A lot of people nowadays are, especially a lot of street guys, are kind of denouncing that culture today. Right. Um, how do you feel about that, and what is your take on that? You saying like denouncing, like for as far as like Fifty saying, "I'm not gang gang. I do not gang bang." You know, you got Fat Joe. Uh, we do not. That stuff was fake. You couldn't build the jail high enough for the lyrics I've said on songs, which are all untrue. That's right. Because guess what? What was music? Music was an opportunity for us to get away from that. Mm -hmm. Let's keep it real. This is the true narrative. We're going to tell the story. Let's tell it the real way. Right? Like, I like what I look like having an opportunity and then flunking it off. Mm -hmm. Just because I want to what? Keep it real? Keep it. You don't keep it so real, you don't keep it dumb. And you be, the, you be the nigga that niggas talk about in past tense. Man, Mano was a real nigga. Man, but he crashed out. Mm -hmm. Damn, Mano was a real nigga. But damn, man. Man, we just came back from his wake. Like, like, come on, like, this music, I hate to see artists get into the game, become artists, and then either go to prison for the rest of their life or die. Yeah. I hate that. I hate that. It's like, yo, we, we went through all these hurdles, all these issues with other, other black men, all these, all these, 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 these tribulations, right? to get out of the street, to get into a corporate environment, this, this music business, where we can really, like, sail away, right? That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Just to die like, like you never left. But you, do you think that comes uh, from artists not being able to tell the difference between, like, this is a business mm -hmm. and this is the streets and... We're going to put this together. I don't think artists actually get that. I think a lot of times we keeping it too real, right? A lot of artists, they don't know the difference. And I think that they think this is the way to go about it, right? You know, and they already come in with affiliations and issues and they come in with the beef already. But at the same time, what I like to tell them when I run into the young niggas from my city, I tell them, I say, yeah, look, in my eyes, the opportunity is greater than the problem. Mm. I ain't trying to preach to you, my nigga, but like, look at the opportunity you got right now. Right now. Like, when I was 16, 15, like, it was no opportunity. Nigga had a crack, had a gun and crack for me. Can, can, I wanted to ask you, because I love a good New York OG hustler mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. documentary. Mm -hmm. And you saw all of them mm -hmm. in real time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I saw you post one, one or two here and there. Um, is that where a lot of people from New York got the style? Because I seen, like, man, I just looked at those old pictures, man, and right. they had that gear on. I, oh, man, I, we fly, man. Yeah, man. We fly. Like, um, You still fly. Yeah, yeah, we facts. be on our shit. But I'm just saying, like, did the big, you know, the big dogs back in the day that did right, what they of course, did, of did course. that influence a lot of the, the fashion that we see Absolutely. still ca carrying on now? Absolutely. When you, when you look at like somebody like Dapper Dan, I know y'all know who that is, right? Yeah, you of see course. he went and did that deal with, with Gucci and all that, which was tremendous because back in the days, he was, you know, he was taking the Gucci print and putting it on like Velours and putting it on different things and it was dope and all of the street hustlers and all of the, the older guys that was getting money was wearing that. Okay. Right. So it was like it influenced the like we I mean, look, we influenced culture. We influenced the world, our culture. Right. What what we do, how we take Nikes and and wear them with the laces, open them a little bit. And, you know, you go back to run DMC, how they was wearing them with no laces and all that. Like we influenced the world. Right? Really what we do from the hood, you know. So, yeah, definitely. How do you feel about uh, New York uh, state of music right now? I love it though. I love the fact that that the young boys was able to come with a sound, right? For a long time, they were saying New York didn't have no identity, mm -hmm. right? That we kind of lost our way. You know, we was heavily influenced by the South, heavily influenced by other places, and then I and then you know the younger guys came with this with this sound, with this drill, you know, which I was. Um, 
I was I was I was applauding that because we didn't kind of it gave us an, an an identity that we didn't have in a long time. Now I, I just want to see them start to individualize themselves a lot more instead of everybody trying to sound exactly the same on every record. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that's the only thing with that. But yeah, I mean, look, I I love my city and I love the fact that we still here. I mean, when you think of you know, um, New York artists, we still got some of the biggest in the game. You know, people forget, you know, Nicki from New York. Mm -hmm. You know, French is from New York. You understand? So, you know, we still got some of the biggest in the game right now. Speaking of New York, uh, they also had their uh, Love and Hip Hop New York, and yeah. you were on it in 2018. Yeah, I did a little something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did a little something. How, how'd you get on that? Um, They had wanted me for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a lot of um activity. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of activity. I get what you're saying. You understand? <laughs> and um, early on, early on, the first season, the first season, the first season, um, I was cool with uh with Olivia. Mm -hmm. Me and her was cool, okay. right? And um, the singer, sing right, and you know it was a half an hour back then. I remember the first. I remember the morning she went to go do it, right? Like she had told me about it, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then she did it, and it came on. And then that second season, I, I was approached to come on to do a scene. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I shot one scene that they never really used. This is back then. Mm -hmm. I shot a scene with her that they it was it was like in a bowling alley. I think they only use it like online. online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, then I was like, nah, I'm cool. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And um, so for, for so for time would you know time would go by. They would always come ask me. You know, you know, come on. I was like, nah, I ain't going on no love and hip hop. I'm going on. And then at the time that I went on, I, I really had, I was really in a relationship. And in that relationship, she had things going on that I felt like she could use. So I was like, yo, if you're going love and hip hop, it can help you. Right. So they came to me and I was like, yo, I'm going to put her on there, but I'm not, I'm not coming on. Mm -hmm. And they was like, well, Mona said they ain't going to do her without you. So I said, all right, I want this number right here. And the number for Love and Hip Hop was pretty outrageous. Mm -hmm. And then she was like, I don't know if we could do that, but maybe, you know. And it came back, and it was like, nah, we close to it. And I was like, nah, I, ain't, I still ain't doing it. And then she came back and she said, we could do the number. I said, oh. No, man, no. I said, hey. <laughs> so then I'm like, at this point, I mean. You're like, let's get it. Yeah. Like, I, I got to do, do something, you know. So I, the thing is, though, they only pay you for the episodes that you, that actually come out. Actually mm -hmm. come out. So the bag that I thought I was going <laughs> to, I uh. thought I was slick, though. I thought I was like, all right, I'm going to shoot all this and I'm going to make, uh, 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 right? But you only get paid for whatever come out. But whatever come out. So mm -hmm. I, only was on, I only was on maybe like seven or eight episodes. But that's, that's free game good. for people. Nah, it was, it was good. Because the, at the number that I was at, it was good. Com you know, based off of what they paying everybody else. Right. You know, yeah, people on the air for like like 1500, 2500, it was like that bad. So the number that I was Damn. at, yeah, I was yeah, like, bro, yeah, was, it was bad. But you know, that was still at a time when Love and Hip Hop was like everybody was watching it faithfully. Mm -hmm, right, and right. so I I'm, I'm sure that it introduced a new audience to you. Um, I don't think so. The thing about it, I never watched it, I never promoted it, I never nothing because the thing was I think the mistake that a lot of people was making when it came to those reality shows, the ones that had um, dreams of being artists, was that that they was gonna get on this this show and it was gonna pop off their music career. Mm. Not true. The show is the show. People watching the show, they want to be entertained in the show kind of way. They may know you as an artist, but that doesn't make them a fan of your music. They want to know the drama. Right, this is something totally different. They want to the see rumors. that water, that so, water get I, thrown. I, I, they they right. said rumor. He had rumors. Yeah. We gonna put the rumors on Mayno now. Yeah. See some fights. Yeah, they want to see fights and stuff like that. They want to mm -hmm. see TV, right? Yeah. I didn't go in there thinking it was gonna help my music career. I had already understood, and I was I, I I was at Mona House one day and we had a conversation. She and I was like, yeah, and we watched the show. She said, no, my kids don't watch the show. Mm -hmm. Kids don't watch the show. I said, yo, I don't watch the show. I said, you don't watch the show. Yo, that's so, crazy. My husband don't watch the show. So your husband don't watch the show. So who watches the show? No, we don't watch the show. She that's says it's just, yeah. it's just business. I said, oh. And, and I learned. I said, it's just business. So I went and did my episodes and kept it moving. Yeah. Business, business. I didn't, business, I didn't talk business. about it. I didn't watch it. I didn't I didn't put on my page. I didn't put up the link. I didn't. It was just, and you may not have promoted, but when yeah. I say new, new uh, audience, yeah. you know, there may have been other, your followers may have been up it in was. a certain way. It, you know, you did have people that didn't, 
that kind of wasn't connected with me that knew me, you know, it was like, oh, I saw you on, you know, which is cool. But again, did that make them fans of the music? It didn't. Right, right. They just made you fans of the person. Right, made you fans of the person. And, yeah, yeah. And um, your girl at the time. But, yeah. you know, then the pandemic hit and yeah. then you had this bright idea to do a podcast. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about, um, it was in the kitchen. Kitchen talk. In a uh, kitchen talk. Kitchen you talk. had a chef, you know, yeah, making yeah, the food. Like, yeah, was, I was yeah. like, dang, that look good, man. <laughs> that was yeah. a dope ass idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was crazy. Because everybody was, congregates in the kitchen when they come over. That's where we that's, hang that's out That's where at. a lot of conversations mm-hmm. That we do that. Mm-hmm. We go in the house, we in the mm-hmm. kitchen. Mm-hmm. Where the inspiration right? came from? Just from, from that. So I, we was on a pandemic, and you remember, like, everybody was getting PP, PPPs, right? Yeah, right? yeah. And... <laughs> I was like, all right, I got to figure out how to, you know what I mean, turn this into some money and all that, right? So I was like... Hustle hard entertainment? Yeah, I'm hustling hard, right? So the first thing I did was I went and bought all this studio equipment because I was like, everybody getting money now, everybody, people calling for verses. So I was like, I need to figure out how to engineer because the studios is shut down, mm-hmm. right? We ain't going in the studio no more. That's and then man. we getting calls about doing... Uh, 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 verses for we selling verses, so I'm like, all right, cool. I got the equipment. So, uh, my engineers show me how to engineer, and that was my first business venture. I was in there doing two or three features a week myself, recording, <laughs> punching in. Uh, yo, right here, uh, 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 yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing that myself, and then I was like, yo, look, we should do a podcast, man. We could do it right in the kitchen, and we could call it Kitchen Talk, right? And the reason I felt like that was like kitchen talk, like because even in the street, first place you got to go is to the kitchen. We gonna we gonna get it together, and then we gonna go outside, right? And I went and I bought more equipment, you know. I bought um, mics and you know and 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 a, and a, and a you know the, uh, the little board and all the that little board. Like I the went and bought board. all this stuff. I started to invest into this stuff, mm-hmm. right? And then we started shooting. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was learning it as I go, mm-hmm. you know. And and then it became you know. It started and it looked to pop good. You had yeah. real guests. You had Remy on there. I had a lot of people yeah. on there, man. Oh man, I had the mayor on there. I've mm-hmm. had. Uh, but what happened? What happened with that is that I, it, it had got so good. I had got up to maybe like sixty something episodes, and then I got approached to do uh put put the show on. Fox Soul, Soul. Mm-hmm. so when I when I put it on Fox Soul, it was good for me because it was like it was a nice check, but then it's like okay, they paying me to do twelve episodes at a time and it's seasonal, so it's not consistent like right. You so it was like I, get it. right. So like now, whenever they want to do another season, I go get it. They go give me my six figures, and you know what I mean. Hello, Question. right. Uh, when did my guy uh, Jim Jones come into play? I, I saw boys. What? Did you guys start working out together, or like, or you all, you guys were always friends? Me or? and Jim early on didn't even like each other. Okay, right. But why? We ain't even know. We ain't know. First of all, <laughs> is it a Harlem be, Brooklyn first, thing? It wasn't really Harlem and Brooklyn thing. Okay. I mean, you know, he 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 was cool with a lot of dudes from from Brooklyn, and I was cool for, with people from Harlem. So it wasn't that. It was just that. I don't know. We didn't know each other, and, and, and sometimes you could read a book the wrong the wrong way, okay. right? And he, you know, I, I would see him with a hundred dudes. Like, this nigga <laughs> here, man. Like, so I see this nigga coming in. He like, he like I ain't like the way he looked at yeah, me. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, we we didn't like we 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 kind of didn't like each other, and then we um, and then we got cool, right? Once we talked, once we talked, we clicked, and. We started doing music together, right? Started, you know, pulling up, you know, and then we just, you know, curated a relationship, you know, over time. And years ago, he had a line where he was like, man, shout out to the Bugatti boys, but me and Mano, we the lobby boys, right? And this was years ago, and we always talked about doing an album together, you know, but... We had never, you know how it's hard to get two artists on yep. the same page at the same time, right? Tell me yeah. about it, boy. Right? You it know took how us that a long is. time to get Jada and Fab yeah. together. It's like. This is what I'm saying. So, you know, it was hard to do that. So, yeah, over time, we just started connecting. And then we, 
it happened, you know, and it started to happen. And then we did the first Lobby Boys. Now we on the second one. So, yeah. We and y'all are behind. doing tour dates? Yeah, actually. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right it's now. happening. Absolutely. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're excited to see that. Yeah. Um, another thing that you did uh, around like 21 mm-hmm. was uh, Chelsea's House, your restaurant. Chelsea's House. That's the family you business. You just talking yeah, to me yeah, about yeah. that. I just told him mm-hmm. you got to come over there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Chelsea House. You know, it looks um, delicious. Yeah, you know, and a lot of, I was telling y'all a lot of people Why? from here. Why? Chelsea's House? Because in Chelsea. Okay. It, Chelsea is an area in Manhattan. Got it. So it's what's a, special about Chelsea? Chelsea, Manhattan. Mm-hmm. It's just a cool area. Like it's it's cool. It's a, it's a little vibe, mm-hmm. especially in the summertime. Yeah. See everybody, everybody from here, like they come to New, they come to New York. It was like, oh, the rats. Oh, little rats! Oh, so cold! Y'all got y'all got a lot of rats. But in the summertime, New York is lit. Like you know, Everybody I've been out, I've been out there in the summertime. New York is lit. And lit. Actually, I haven't seen a big rat in New York when I when I went. You I have? Haven't, I, I haven't. Have, I haven't have. seen no big rat. Well, I, I only have. go where, to New where York. Where was you the at? You sure you was in New York City? Yeah, I was in Manhattan though. You was in Manhattan. You didn't see no rats. I didn't see no rat. Oh, okay. That's what's up. I wasn't looking for them either. Now they look for you. They usually look for you. They looking for you. And you have two locations now. Well, yeah, we had well, we ch- uh, we we had an issue with the um with the landlord because the second location was like a it was turned into like a club two oh, turn. Yeah. So it was two was turn. Like, Where was the so second location at? It was it was in Manhattan too, but okay. it was on the upper it was on the upper west side. Okay, right. So they be like, oh man, all these people coming in here. Y'all, y'all triple parked. Like police oh, okay. coming here. So it was like this double park. The double park could be a triple problem. Triple parking. Oh, triple, like damn. literally. You had it, the black yeah, hat, right? It was crazy. We was going crazy. So it was um, it that was happening. So we finding another location for the second one. You know, and I was telling y'all a lot of lot of lot of homies came there from there. I had Monica pull up down there. You know, um, said thug, gunner. thug, you know, free thug, gunner them been there. Um. Um, future been there, you know. A lot of, lot of, lot of homies from um, from Atlanta been there. We got to make our way down yeah. to the baller. Alert Speaking show. of Thug, you got yeah. you have a song yeah. with Thug. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep, yep. The thug. whole video, you yeah, must have been holding video. on this for yeah, a little we minute. Saw, we, saw, we just talked about that when the music timeless though, right? Yeah, yeah. You know yes, said? for sure. Yeah. Right. So, so before the around the time of the pandemic, or maybe like right before that, me and Thug had did the song, and then we shot the video in L.A. That's fine. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, Thug has blonde hair. I'm over here like, yeah. this is been a minute. from yeah. a couple of years yeah, yeah. ago. Been a minute. But that sound, though. <laughs> nah, that, that sound, sound ain't going nowhere. Undeniable. Fast, fast, fast. Yeah. Undeniable. Well, you, you know, know what? Atlanta another thing that's hair. undeniable yeah. is what? Mano Day, man. You Mano got Day, August yeah. 16th. Congratulations. Oh, man, you been, you, you, you oh know, yeah, she don't play. I like that. Play. You know, they need to she'll take, play. they need to take, like, advice journalism. Because you go some places some some sometimes and they they don't know, they don't do no type of research. I be doing interviews sometimes and I I go get up there and I <laughs> I do a little research just like that. You know, yeah, what I mean? appreciate it. Thank you. Lord. But um, you had a lot. You, you have a lot in life that you have accomplished, and this is one that is super big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for Mano Day, which is August sixteenth, yeah. um, not too far away from your birthday. Yeah. Woo. Right. <laughs> but uh, will you do anything special? Because I know, like for Angela Yee Day, she does yeah. a lot. But for your day, what do you have going on? So first of all, that's my mother's birthday. Okay. Ooh. Right. Yeah, that's my mom's birthday. Right. You know, I got my mom's here. Okay. Right. And um, so that's special mm-hmm. in itself. So I get to you know, uh, celebrate her birthday. You know, do something special for her. You know, she's not here no more. And at the same time, do something special in the hood. Right. I wanna. I already put my permits in to block off two streets, right? We're going to do this big block party. Oh, I want to have some stuff going on for the community, have some vendors down there, you know, you know, and, and, and have some information, man. I, I feel like the hood lack information. That's you know a fact. Saying? That's a fact. We need information. We need to start having information about uh, um, the real estate and, you know, and, and the smaller things like the hood need health care and shit like that. For and, sure. And I seen something the other day that was real profound to me, man. It was... I, I, I should have reposted it, but I didn't. I seen a dude say, man, everybody talking about, man, I'm trying to leave my kids something. I'm trying to leave my kids something, man. I'm hustling so I can leave my kids something. He said, nigga, all you got to do is get fucking life insurance. Mm. Leave your kids something. Yeah. Right. And then when you think about that, though, right, that's, it's something to that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, it's, we all want to leave our kids something. We all want to have this grand, you know, fortune. You understand? But, you know, but we still should position ourselves, whether we have that fortune or not, we should still do certain things. And that's what I'm saying. It's the information, right? It's just that simple, right? We grew up in the hood. We, nobody be telling us nothing. We got to figure everything out. But that's, as low as $20 a month for life insurance. This is what I'm saying. But that's, that's information, that, information that we lack. 
information that we lack. Word. Speaking of kids, uh, is that some of the things that you share with your son? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. My son's 21 now. Unfucking believable. He can party with you. He do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you have do. him everywhere ha- with you. I be having him everywhere. He done been all over with me. Hey, I mm-hmm. take him out the country. He been, oh man. That's dope. And sometimes I look at him. We was in LA one time and I'm like, I look over and, and we not even in the strip club and the girl just busting it open on him and I'm just like oh my god I'm a bad father like, <laughs> like what is happening here like this is crazy man yeah yes cause yes. he's still your baby boy at the end of the day yeah but the thing so my philosophy was I'm gonna take him out with me so that he can learn how to do these things because he coming to an age with you know you get around 17, 18 you want to explore mm-hmm. you want to start hanging out with your homies start meeting girls going to parties and all that I felt like it was a way to do that right. it's a way to be safe mm-hmm. to do that right it's an etiquette at partying right it's a way to, to make sure you get home safe everybody yeah. is safe so come out with me let me show you how to do Let pops teach mm-hmm. you the ropes right <laughs> And sometimes I'm like, am I being a father? If I'm being a homeboy, like I'm, I'm just like, am I his homie? Like I don't understand. Like I don't know what's going I mean, on? That's right the here. best kind of parent, right? You know? Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. You grow with your kids, right? And the girls be coming around and be like, "Ain't your son?" I'm like, "What?" So I say, either I'm too young, or I look too young, or you look too old. What's happening? What we doing? Like you <laughs> nice, know what I nice. mean? I look this good, nigga. What's up? Like you know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know. So yeah, it's 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 cool because he get the we 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 just got a dope relationship, and and I and I say to him, man, I wish I had a the opportunity to have a relationship with my father like this mm-hmm. you know I wish I could have been like a grown man and and, and, and like talk yeah. to my pops like you yeah, know kick, yeah. Yeah. is that what motivates you to stay present in his life you know throughout his whole life absolutely man like absolutely like you know you know kids focus you up you know when I remember I was telling my son was born I still was in, in prison mm-hmm. and I'm like man I got three more months right so I'm like man I gotta get it together you know I, we could go full steam ahead in the streets but I was like look man music let me at least get that a try. Let me at least get that a real try. If it don't work, then whatever. But let me at least give it a real try. And, um, you know, having a son, it just makes you kind of like get it together because you got somebody that needs you, you know, mm-hmm. and it's different. What made you want to stop there? Because, you know, like, rappers be having kids now. Right. Some rappers uh, got 12 kids. Well, yeah. I got two. Yeah, I got a daughter, too. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I got two. She's 11. I just came back from Vegas, and she she plays all these sports, right? <laughs> Like I'm, man, my, she's like a child protege, protege, right? Prodigy. Mm-hmm. She plays the flute. She's a she's she plays soccer. She's doing tennis. But her, her number one sport is volleyball. Okay. So I just came back from Vegas from her volleyball tournament. Nice. That's what's up. They was playing like seven, eight games a day. Wow. You know, I had a new respect for volleyball. It's like <laughs> I wanted to get out there and play. I'm out there, and I'm I'm like. Embarrassing though, like I'm out there going, yeah, yeah, let's go, Gia. <laughs> That's my baby, Lee. Proud dad. Every, yeah, every time she hit the ball and get it, I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, I'm like ready to run out there. And her mom's like, yo, please, you gonna embarrass her, man? And, and she telling me this is a uh, social suicide. Like, <laughs> you think I'm doing too much? Like, yeah, I she's love doing it. Too much. Did you but, want any more kids, or you're done? Um, sometimes I do. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, maybe, nah, I don't want no kids. Now, then I go, man, maybe, nah, you know. So you know, it's up and down, and a lot of that depends on who you with at the time in your life. You know what I mean? Because the right person to make you do whatever, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you say no to one thing, but then you you find the right person. It's like, mm-hmm. man, I'm, shit, man, she might get ten. Has anybody made you feel like that? Nah, not 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 yet, not yet. I'm open to it though. Mm. Okay, so, I'm open to it. Okay, you know, op- make me feel something, baby. Okay. All right, them DMs about so, to be so, so, Make so, me feel so, something. So Mano is single. Yeah, I'm single, but I be like trying things out. You know, <laughs> say less, say people. Less. You know what I'm saying, like. You know. <laughs> well, speaking of try things out, we'll go back to uh, way up with ye. Right. Uh, you tried that out, and you are like a right. regular, and um, right. it is fascinating to see to hear you on there uh, because you be going in on people. First of all, I gotta say pause to trying things out. Right? That sounded crazy, right? No, trying things out could be because pa- this is a pause era right now. Yeah, yeah, that pause, wasn't pause. So New York, but I, did, I didn't. That wasn't that was, pause. That wasn't a pause. That wasn't a pause. All your man's in there's like, yeah, that was a pause. Pause. Okay, yeah, pause. Pause, pause everybody. She'll clip, yeah. she'll clip this up. Yeah. Pause. But listen, um, <laughs> the way up. That show, because the thing people be calling up there with stupidness, man. It's like, why would you call up here and telling us that? Yeah, like you sound Yo, crazy, folk, though. Yo, they let you know though. It be 
Wow, it be people. Wild. Yo, people, people is think wild. that we yeah. making it up. I ain't making this up. Like, people mm-hmm. really calling it, talking crazy, talking about, yo, I slept with this one, and, you know, and I slept with that one. And one girl said she had, what she said she had sex with, how many dudes? And, and one year, I forgot the number. It was just Jeez. ridiculous. Like, I'm just like, wow. And I don't want to judge, like, because I ain't nobody to be judging nobody. Like, right. I ain't no greater than no other human. But at the same time, I'm just like, you calling up here for a reason. I'm thinking you're looking for advice. Right. Yeah. Right? You you just don't want to just say this. You want somebody to tell you something. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and you be telling them. Yeah. You be letting them know. Um, speaking of other current events, man, a lot of people are letting um, Diddy have it right now. What mm-hmm. is your take on all that's going on with him? I want to see more than just these accusations, man. Like, I've been lied on. I, I mean, I've been in a situation where people said things. Things been taken out of context. Um, what is... What we talking about is what? What is he? Is is he being accused of? Of what? I don't. I'm. I'm not sure. Like I don't know. Like I want to see more. Like I don't want to just condemn somebody, you know, just based off of what what popular, you know, uh, belief is. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, shit. I might be a freak. I might like to do you know crazy things with my girl or whatever. But you know, whatever that is, right? At the same time. We talking about crimes. Like, what's what's the crime? I don't know. I just I don't want to jump on a bandwagon and just be like, oh, you know, this person did this and he did this because this is what the news is saying. Or, mm-hmm. you know, then we talking about these people making these accusations. You got some dude named Lil Rod. First of all, that's, oh, that producer it should be a fucking pause on his name. Like, n- nigga Lil named Rod. Lil Rod. Like, what? <laughs> what? How your name Little Rod? Like, how the fuck your name Little Rod? Oh That's crazy. Gosh. That's your name? Your name is Little Rod? <laughs> Lil Rod? That's wow. That's pause, for real. It could be short for Rodney. That should be no Diddy right there, what? Lil Rod. Like, no wait, Diddy. Out of, yeah. wait do, you, out do you think it's like a, a agenda to destroy popular This is what I'm black? saying. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to lean, lean on that because I feel like it's so easy for us to just be pushed in this direction, right? It's so easy. It, all it takes is, um, you know, the media. And if you know anything about, you know, the 60s, and I hate to get all like this, but if you know anything about the 60s and what they did with black leadership and all that, these were some of the tactics, right, to destroy you. Basically, they, they divide and conquer, like J. right? J. J. Edgar Hoover. There you go, yep. right? So, Cointel Pro, what they would do was they, they, they would put out misinformation, mm. have us looking at each other. Right. They sending out letters and sending out things saying, you know, this one talking about that one. This one got caught doing this. Right. Mm-hmm. And it keeps us disorganized. Right. And and also propaganda, which is fed few through the media, is a tool that's always been used. Media controls. This the mind. is what I'm saying. So I'm not quick to jump at what everybody else is running, running towards. Like, because if you ask the average person. She's like, what? What you think he did? He's like, I, I don't know. He did something. I, I, don't, I don't know. Like he, you know what I mean? He, he, he was sex trafficking. Oh, all right. What sex? Like, I, they got to give me a clear definition of what sex trafficking is. So you saying he was what? He was making people sell their body? Like, I don't understand. Is it under eight? Like, it, it's not clear to me. Mm-hmm. So I'm not. I'm not jumping in that at all. Especially with a little uh, with a name with a nigga named Little Rod like that. Yo, wow, like, <laughs> yo. The fuck is your name, Little Rod? Pause. Pause. Like, oh what my the, gosh, what? that's a no diddy did nigga. Like what? Your name Little Rod? <laughs> oh man, speaking of trends, um, another trend that juvenile is kind of mm-hmm. starting now like is that. uh making uh old mu- uh from old, old music new videos to yeah. it. Uh, would you do that? I was thinking about that today. Word, that's which, crazy. Which song you, you I think about? I don't know, but I, w- I was thinking about it this morning on the way on the way here. That would be dope. That would be dope. Like yeah. just doing it. I, li- I like the game because you could just do whatever. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Social media, you know, gave us the opportunity to kind of like do whatever we want to do. We don't got to stay in the realm of just doing things just the particular way of you know, I right, put out a project and then you take two videos and like you could do whatever you want to do. It's things that I, I it's, it's it's songs that I like three, four, five, six years ago, and I'm like, man, maybe I could, whether they was popular or not, I I liked it. Maybe I could just go back and do something like that, you know. Mm-hmm. So I like that. Baller alert! Hey, yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy Mano, and right now you tune into the Ball Alert Show. Uh, last current event, um, 
you know, Kendrick went in on uh talking about who's talking about the big three. Uh the big yeah, three. the big three. Yeah. And it's kinda shaking up hip hop right now. Uh what do you think about that? Is the the like the, that record. Like that. Yeah, yeah. I know. I, I listened to it. I didn't think it was like So you you shaking so up. So you think you, what he said, you didn't think it was just like, Oh my god, this was the craziest. No, I didn't think it was that crazy. I didn't go, Oh shit, he just went at Drake ass. Like it wasn't like the takeover like, or nothing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like nah, it wasn't. I think, that crazy. I, I think it was a jab, but I don't think it was like a, It wasn't nothing crazy. It, it was, was a little, definitely oh, okay. a Jab. Yeah, it was a jab. It definitely was a yeah. jab, right? I guess he's trying to bait Drake to, to say something. Um, I think Drake said something. Well, on Drake Instagram. actually yeah. said, uh, it, "You're your Niggas own can't worst fuck enemy." With him. That's what he basically saying. I think they've been both jabbing each other for a long time. Yeah. Small, I don't, but I don't think Kendrick small can jabs. fuck with Drake. You don't think? You, you mm-hmm. don't think so? Mm-hmm. Not like uh, Kendrick can rap, but Drake is the overall artist, right? As far as hits go, hits, right? hits that that we all like right mm-hmm. you know there's some dance shit on there some shit that, that we like in the street like then, most def said like you can play uh, this you hear it in the in, in yeah, shop. shopping yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But <laughs> that, that was that was crazy yeah, how he, yeah, how he, yeah, that how was he a, did that, yeah, yeah that was a shot though like I ain't really <laughs> nah that was a shot the thing is this Drake make dope music right let's not act like he don't make music that we right. not playing in a club mm-hmm. yeah right that's right? a fact let's playing it everywhere so you can say yeah. whatever the fuck you want to say about Oh, it's in the it's in Walmart and all that. It's in the club though. Mm-hmm. We like to be, I like to be outside. We outside. We in the club. Like we mm-hmm. hearing Drake music, right? We at Chelsea's house. We at the Chelsea house. But Kendrick, I don't think um, I don't think Kendrick like is like. I think he he's a dope rapper. I think he be spitting his bars and all, that. and he got and he got hits too. But uh, I think I if I had to pick, you know, it would be. Drake, okay. If, if it was, okay. up, yeah, if I had to pick, yeah. Well, you you think? Well, they definitely everybody's teaming up against Drake. Um, what it, what it seems like is Why? happening. Well, I think that uh, anytime that you're going against somebody, you know, with that level, I think you know you kind of got to click up. You know, what I just saying? don't know what I, I, I <laughs> just want to click though. Yeah, I was gonna say. I and, mean, and what happened? Because we don't really know. We well, they was talking about so a girl, of, and then but who is they? Is it? Like, it's the, who, it's the internet. Saying. It's the internet. So that's what I'm saying. So the, my, <laughs> saying that's they? my problem with that. That's the problem right that's there. That's the problem right there. Right. Like, who is they? Like, it's like, oh, because I see, so, I be saying shit on Say Cheese. I be over like, well, where'd you get, where'd you get this shit from? That's right. what I be wondering too. With, when they say this is the girl that they're fighting the girl, over, oh, the girl, the girl it does say allegedly, out. allegedly. But the girl, like the girl, I go to the girl. I even went to the girl. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, Lord, let me see. Maybe I know her. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you, you click no DMs to see if you got yeah, any recent history. Yeah. <laughs> Was I in her DMs? Like, right. you, know, I, you know, making my rounds. So I said, hold on. I seen this page before. I'm like, hold up. Damn. And then I go down her page. She got a whole guy, right? So I'm like, and then I see her with a post. She like, man, I ain't, I ain't her. Mm-hmm. I got a nigga. Oh, yeah. see, see, but that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I got a nigga. Me and my nigga t- <sighs> is laughing about this. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. See? So, but I had a question. Yeah. So one time for my guy, uh, MP3 Wax. My guy Chris, man. MP3 Chris? Wax, man. What, 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 what? Like, I see he... Yeah, man. He, is there, is there a, a family? Is this like a, yeah, nah, a family this is situation? Yeah, family. Chris, Chris and MP3 Wax, you know, they, they, like, they stand in between, like, you know, the DJ side, the artist okay. side. They help piece all those things together, right? He called me 10 times in a row one day. He was like, Ferrari, yeah, I just want to make sure you, go. you got the main on thumb. Yeah, you go. I said, yes, yeah, you go. I got you need the somebody piece. like that. You definitely need somebody without, like without that. Without having somebody, imagine I have somebody like that. No, nah, fact. Yeah. <laughs> imagine it. I wouldn't even be down here. I was at a DJ listening session. Mm-hmm. He called a DJ that was standing next to me. He will do that. Hey, yeah. uh, DJ Smack said, Ferrari. Chris to answer your phone when you yeah. read his business. Listen, I'm over here like, God damn, I already sent him the make no schedule. Nah, nah, he needs send it like to the me. group chat. <laughs> 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 Fucking Chris, man. Yeah. Yeah, nah, that's okay. nah, that's family right there, man. Okay. MP3 Wax. Gotta have a Chris from yeah. MP3 Word. Wax on, on the squad. That's a fact. Man, we appreciate you, Mano, for stopping by the Ball Alert Show. You welcome anytime. I, I, may, I Listen, back. if I made it here, I'm, I'm, I made it. Yeah, listen, yeah, yeah. Wow. The big, this is the Big Ball Alert Show. Hey, wow. man, I appreciate that. I'm just glad we learned so much, and I hope yeah. that everybody else take away something some main ovations because you definitely ovation. was dropping gems today yeah. man yeah uh, before couple we get out- pauses Oh couple yeah, yeah, pauses. couple pauses. She gonna get she got little you. rods. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? This is why you good for radio, hey, man. This is this is definitely why, why you good for radio. Why would his name be Little Rod? Right, <laughs> like hey, y'all can hear more of this, this on is, way up with yeah, yeah, because uh, he's definitely on there acting, 
like Acti- Mayno. Yeah, you know 100%. what I'm saying. New Mayno. Uh, or catch him at the clubs or where where are you performing at? Chelsea, at? at Chelsea. At Chelsea. At, at the Chelsea house. We there all the time. You but know? you with the lobby boys. You all. Oh, so yeah, we. Oh man, I don't know the dates though. Okay. We definitely got some um some shows coming up. I got I got to look at those dates though. But yeah, we we'll be in a city near you. All right, Fine. man. Before we get out of here though, we do need a main ovation. So okay. leave us with a pep talk. Yo, what's up? It's your boy Man on. I just want to tell you like this, man. Stay down long enough to come up, man. Right? The things that you're going through right now, the pain that you feel right now is temporary. Stay down, right? Don't make a a a a, a solution that is uh permanent for a temporary issue. So, and focus on the not the problem, but focus on the solution. So let's get it. Stay down. Come up. We here. Ball alert show. I made it, baby. Baller alert. 